there, it's Anne here on the Life LDC Knits channel. It's Sunday, May the 2nd, and I thought I'd, uh, it was time to sit down and have a little chat and uh, talk about my recent makes. I'm going to, I'm, uh, I'm using that term because of this me made May thing that always happens on Instagram. Um, I've always appreciated all those people who could actually show something me made every single day of May and I thought well you know it would be a nice thing to aspire to while now we've sort of really learned to like slow down and appreciate things more and uh, so anyway drink of your choice today's water I'm a little bit parched so water is the drink of today so grab yourself a drink and let's chat about May me makes, things that I have made, things that I've got planned. Maybe uh, you can give me some ideas of things that you've got planned for me made makes. It's really a tongue twister, isn't it? So anyway, cheers. The first thing I want to share with you is, yes, it is by Paint Dobbs Stole, but if you are a subscriber to the Rowan newsletter, you will have seen, oh, got an end to, to uh, tie in. You will have seen that the spring summer 2021 newsletter includes uh, all sorts of wonderful, wild and wonderful things. But one of the articles is about the Rowan Ambassadors, the group of us that started way back in 2013, um, using social media to share our appreciation of rowing yarns. Yes, there is an article about the six functioning Rowan ambassadors who who promote Rowan. We love Rowan. We promote it. We knit with all the time. We knit Rowan designs. We do our own designs. We did do all sorts of things. So there's six of us and they're all featured in the latest summer 2021 newsletter. Here's the new Rowan website at knitrowan.com. I just love how clean and crisp the uh, layout is. And these um, sort of behind the scenes video shoots that they show on the homepage are really fun to watch. If you want to find the newsletter, you go up to the uh, main menu bar and on the inside Rowan tab, right there, you see the newsletters and there is the spring summer 2021 newsletter. Click on that and it loads up. Now this is a major publication. It's 82 pages long, so it takes a little bit to load in. And there it is. I just love that sweater that they use on the cover. That's from the um, Ease Collection by Lisa Richardson. There's always a little seasonal blurb from the Rowan team. And then here is the contents page and you'll see it's got um, features on uh, yarn shops around the world and new Rowan yarns and uh, publications. And yes, there's the Rowan Ambassador article on page 32. So there we go, there's, there's the group of us there. Esther in the UK, Jen Giggly's from uh, the US. She's now uh, designing for Rowan and for Mode at Rowan. Yay, yay, way to go, Jen. There's me on the left and uh, Diana on the right. Diana is the only person that I know that has knit those pants from Mode at Rowan 03 in Sofiac DK. And then there's Conrad. He is an amazing knitter. He doesn't get to knit much because he's busy working during a pandemic over there. And uh, Oot, who is retired and is busy decorating her home with knits. It's a great publication, 82 pages long. Make sure you subscribe. In the little blurb about me, it mentions the four designs from Rowan Magazine 60... 
eight that I did during sort of the winter lockdown. And then it mentions that, yes, I would really like to make a palladium. And this is my ta-da moment. I made a Martin Story Palladium. And it's, it's a long cardigan. I'll take some pictures and put them in here. But the inspiration for this color was the French mustard that's in here with this blue, absolutely gorgeous blue, which is, matches my shirt. So even though this is a very unusual combination for me, I think it really, really works, as you can see here. And so I took the inspiration from my Kafe's Paint Dobbs shawl. You can't argue with Kafe when it comes to color, can you? But even though I, I recognize this luscious combination here in this garment, I, it also um, instigated a, a memory, a memory of something that I had. So I was digging, digging, digging in my cupboard and in a drawer and I found it. And this is, a, it's absolutely gorgeous. I rarely wear it, but I'm just gonna share it with you here. I have to hold it because I'll, I will I'll show you why I have to hold it. But isn't that gorgeous? And look at the colors, it's turquoise blue and this beautiful uh, green and there's gold embroidery. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bracelet, but as you can see, it's broken. And when I pulled it out of the drawer, the little snap or button closure came out, popped out, and the half of the back felt lining on this came off. I was very disappointed, but I have coerced. The hubby's going to fix this for me. He's going to get out some of his really good glue stuff and we're going to glue it. And so one thing I learned from this is, and, and this is a life lesson that we really should know now because of this pandemic. Don't save your good stuff. I would put this on and then take it off because I'd worry about getting it damaged or losing it or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, geez, it's been in a drawer all these years and here now, and here now, I could be wearing it with this. Isn't that really, it just matches beautifully and what a nice accent. So don't, don't, don't save your good stuff. I'm a really bad example of that. I get things and then I, I keep them forever. I sort of let them, I, I let them, what's the word? I let them ferment, I let them stew, I let them mature like like a good wine. And then sometimes you, you lose the, the joy out of wearing it because you've let it, <coughs> because you've, you've lost the enthusiasm for it and you've forgotten why you, you, you acquired it in the first place. So when I did this scarf and I fell in love with this combination, like I love all the colors, but I just love that uh, French mustard combination here. I immediately ordered a bag of French mustard and the idea was to make palladium from magazine 68 and I'll just show you that here. It's one of the um, Martin Story designs from the City Tweed, the City Tweed uh, collection in 68. And you can look at my Mag Rowan Magazine 68 review uh, for a complete overview of 68. But when I saw Palladium, there's all sorts of great designs in here. But when I saw Palladium, I thought, wow, what a great sweater that would be. Now, didn't like it in this color. It's, it's quite dark, but I could see this in the French mustard. So I immediately ordered the 10 balls and I started and I knit, knit, knit. It is a really a long sweater, but like, look at the color of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I was knitting away. It was a great knit. The front um, decreases start 
right about your waist and, and start decreasing before you ever get to the, the underarm decreases. So that's a little tricky. You've got all these markers going and it's, a, and, and because it's such a long knit, you're counting rows all the time. And uh, I eventually came up with um, using a spare thread of, of yarn and marking each 10 rows because it, it was just so much easier. Count 10, mark it, count 10, mark it. And then I could quickly count how many rows I had done before I had to do any, any decreases. You know, I should know these things. I should know how to, how to handle a major knit. I was knitting, 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 and I thought I've got two sleeves to go and I've only got, I had two balls, two balls and a little bit. And I thought, mm, I'm gonna run out. So I ordered another ball of yarn. And as you can see, it's still here. So guess what? Another thing to learn, trust the pattern. When it says 10 and you, you can look up Unravelry and someone else knit the same size, and they use 10 and you're getting gauge and you're getting row gauge and stitch gauge and you're knitting away and you think you're going to run out just trust the pattern i really what i i was so worried that i wouldn't get the same dye lot and uh, it turned out my yarn store still had the same dye lot so i immediately bought another ball and what what you should do is phone your yarn store if they have the same dye lot you can go i know and you can just keep knitting and then when you run out of yarn then order another ball but no i ordered another ball before i actually really needed to get another ball now it's not a big deal because that means this will go into my stash always can use another ball of rowan felted tweed and stash can't we nothing to be uh Nothing to worry about that. I just didn't like paying all that postage just for one little ball. I had to really resist ordering something else to make the postage worthwhile. Oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, great Martin Story design. I will put some uh, full view pictures here. And uh, I really, really love it. And I really, really, really can recommend it. I've actually taken another couple of weeks off from uh, knitting this month and mostly that was because I was, well, well, first of all, I showed you my Pepin bag, didn't I? And so I bought a new sewing machine and I sewed the Pepin bag. I love the Pepin bag. And then this new pattern from Noodlehead came up and it was called the Sand Hill Sling. And I was intrigued by it because during, uh, this uh, COVID time, I go out with a little tiny bag that I can't, I can barely just get my, my car keys and my hand sanitizer and my little, I have a little pouch with my appropriate cards because we don't need cash right now, right? So I was going out with that, but then the summer's coming and I wanted my sunblock and I wanted my sunglasses and nothing would fit in there. And I got really used to walking around with, with something that's very light, um, and I saw the Sand Hill Sling and I thought, hmm, this is really great. So long story short, lots of, lots of, lots of acquiring of, from different areas. I had to get um, lining and canvas for the bag and zippers and hardware and everything else. So here is my Sand Hill Sling. And it goes over your shoulder. It has, it has a shoulder uh, strap and then it has a loop and a hook at the bottom. I, I followed the advice of some other uh, Sand Hill Sling people and put a hook on either side so you can transfer it from one side to the other. So it's worn actually on your back like a backpack, but I tend to really like to wear it like this, just over my shoulder or cross body with it in the front off to the side because then I can get in and out of it easily or into the front pocket. And get what I need when I'm when I'm out and about. And this is great because it holds a full size wallet 
it holds my sunglasses. I've got a lipstick in here. I've got my hand sanitizer in here. And it's big enough to even have a nice 100 gram skein of sock yarn if you want to have a sock project in here for while you're waiting for things. I love the color and you'll see it sort of really goes with the French mustard turquoise blue combination, doesn't it? Now, I really learned something from this. When I cut this out, I didn't realize that this pocket piece was going to be the sort of the central focus. I somehow thought that the inside piece, which is, um, this was the front piece, but I didn't, I, you know, not being experienced with, with uh, this kind of sewing, I sort of messed that up because the front piece was very similar to this. Look at the beautiful pattern on that. And that's what I really wanted in the front. It seemed like I got sort of a paler sort of section of the, uh, the canvas on the front. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? And then another modification also suggested by someone else was a uh, hanging tab so that you can hang it on your doorknob or behind your, your uh, you know, a hook behind your door or whatever. And I love this. So this is the Sand Hill Sling by Noodlehead Designs, and I will put a link to this down below. Now, you might be wondering what's next on the knit, uh, the knit front. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about knits and I really want my knits to be, um, I really want to have wearable, usable, knits that I can I can put on and not have to think too much about them. I've got I just recently cleaned out my knit cupboard. I've got so many knits that I wear once or twice and then I really don't wear that much or they're too hot or they're too bulky to wear under a coat or just or or or. So I've uh, cleaned out. I've kept all the ones that I actually wear on a consistent basis and I have discovered that I really like cardigans because I can take cardigans on and off, get hot, take them off, get cold, put them on. And a cardigan, you can just sort of whip around your shoulders and you can use it as a scarf if you really, if you really want to because of the buttons. Buttons make it uh, uh, really versatile. And if you're cold, you just button it right up and it's like a pullover. So I think cardigans might be my focus. Now, having said that, my next design might be a pullover. I don't know. Like all over the place here like right so I guess I'm not really sure what my next project will be I'm not really a summer knitter because uh, southern Ontario is just too hot in the summer for any kind of knits at night you can wear a knit uh, if it's a cooler evening but uh, even most nights in the, the summer here aren't aren't suitable for any kind of summer knits and I'm not big and I'm not big on knitting with cotton. So I'm not sure what I'm going to knit next. My next knit will be, but I will let you know. But what I can tell you is it's it's I'm developing sort of a wardrobe plan. There's all sorts of ways of uh, planning your wardrobe capsule wardrobes and you know uh, handmade wardrobes and stick to one one brand and all this kind of stuff and and that's sort of why I knit with Rowan most of the time most of the time because it keeps me focused and I know that the shades go together and I love how everything works together the des the designs and the yarns and what and it, it, it just all works right so I thought I should apply that to my wardrobe going forward you know, I've had almost a year of just slouching around in very comfortable clothes. The same four or five things are getting worn all the time. They get worn, they get washed, they get put back on. And it makes you realize that you don't need as much as you think. And when you go to a store, you're so overwhelmed by everything that's there and all the different brands and all the different colors that you pick this and you pick that and then you get home and, and they're all, they're in the cupboard and they're all 
different. And unless you're a very savvy, disciplined shopper, which I am not, never was. I just sort of like, if I really liked it, that was it. Um, I am getting smarter in my, in my, my uh, advancing age, I'm getting smarter. So I'm going to apply sort of what I've been applying to my knitting to my wardrobe. Now, I don't know where you are, but you guys that are in the UK definitely know about the great British sewing bee, don't you? Now, through a little bit of internet trickery wickery, I have been able to watch the great British sewing bee. And I just am thrilled by all the, the makes and everything. And uh, so it, it, it prompted me to take a look at the kind of things I wanted to make and, and fit them, those items, into my hand-knit wardrobe. So the first thing that I want to make is a top, and it's from the first episode of The Great British Sewing Bee this year, and it's a top that you pull over, that, What's it called? Like a uh, just it's just a little pop over top. It has a button uh, at the back, and it's sleeveless. And I think it will be great. And so I did make myself a little muslin. So I had this fabric, and I I actually bought it for something else, and then that project fell through. I won't bore you with the details, but I decided that I would try to make this little slim pop over top. It's got a high-low um, hem on the bottom and it pops over and it has an opening at the back and you just put, um, on the B it had a, a little button thing here but I'm just going to put a thread and a button. So it was a great sew. It's, it, in, it requires a, a technique called bagging out where you actually drag the whole sweater the whole sweater, the whole top inside out and through one of these armholes and it pulls it out and everything is in the right side and all the, it, it, if you don't sew it's sort of hard to explain it but it's, it was like mind boggling to me that I'd never heard the term. Um, so anyway, I did it and I really, really liked it and I tried it on and I really, really liked it but it was very tight because in my sizing, how do I put this? I am, I'm bigger in the chest measurement than I am at the high chest measurement. And this is something else I've, I've, I've been thinking about within my knitting. I have been picking my sweaters. I used to pick my sweaters by my full chest measurement. And then I started picking my sweaters by my under arm measurement. And I'm still actually finding them to be like, there's the shoulder. I'd like the shoulder to be up there. So my next sweater, I'm going to actually go down another size. And then I might have to do an adjustment here in the chest area, but it'll fit better on the shoulder. Cause right now, because of the shoulders, I think it makes the front hang I always have trouble getting the buttons to hang right. They always look great flat, but when you put them on one side or the other goes. So thinking about sewing and knitting together, it's everything sort of coming into place. So what you do in the world of sewing is called a FBA, a full bust adjustment. And you only add space where you need it. You don't add space at the shoulder or at the underarm or at the waist. You just, and it's, you'd have to Google it up and look it on YouTube. I've been watching these FBA videos and it looks simple to do. So my next one of these, I'm going to do a full FBA on it. So I'm going to apply all of this to my knitting and my sewing in the future which means a little bit more thinking rather than just jumping into the pattern and following the pattern. And I have been knitting like a maniac this last little while. I've been knitting 
looming pretty full on for quite a while. And a lot of things, while I like them, I haven't been like totally, totally thrilled. So, thrilled, yes. Thrilled, yes. Do I wish though that I made it a size smaller? Yes. Am I going to, to rip it apart and re-knit it? No, this is a humongous uh, knit. But it makes me think maybe I should knit this again at a size smaller and just that would be a really good sample of, of showing how maybe that's the way to go. Knit it a size smaller and then make and an figure out how to do a FBA on a knit. And I'm sure it can be done. People do it with short rows. Um, can you do it when you've got a big v-neck? I don't know. Something to think about and to look forward to the challenge of uh, figuring that out. So I guess I have to wrap up by saying that my goal for 2021, I know it's already May of 2021, and uh, but I think my goal for 2021 is more usable knits, more attention paid to uh, fit. I think we always think that fits can be looser because they're knits, but I really would like to have more attention paid to the, the, the sizing here on my shoulders. Um, more me made things. Uh, I like it. I like sewing bags, but I t have to be honest, I'm really more into garments. So I am going to try to do more garments. And I'm hoping that uh, for each knit, I can do uh, an appropriate top to match. And maybe eventually by the end of the year, maybe I'll, I'll tackle a pair of, of uh, pants. Did I just say that? Like jeans pants? I would love to make jeans. I really, really want a pair of high-waisted, like full waist height jeans like I used to wear back in the 70s. Could it be done? Could it be done? I don't know. So I think this might be a short one today. Um, I wish you all well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you much, very much for commenting. I do try to get back to everybody who comments. And so until next time when I'm hoping to have actually a nice top to go underneath this palladium sweater. Until next time, take care of yourself and happy knitting. So here I am in the outfit that I wore during the video. Just jeans and a nice turquoise top hubby still hasn't fixed that bracelet yet darn it but um, you can see it's a quite a spectacular colorway but it goes right it works um, I love the length of this sweater and it uh, I think it looks quite effective here here's my uh, Sandhill Sling by Noodlehead and I just love how the way that goes uh, across my shoulder and it provides a pop of color to this combination this outfit just with the jeans and and the two solid color uh, tops with it I love my Sandhill Sling I actually prefer it um, not as a cross body but more well, you see, when I do it cross body, I, I sort of, I prefer it in the front, not in the back, the way it's shown in the pattern. Um, it's easier to get into the zipper in that. But to be honest, I really prefer it as uh, an over the shoulder bag. There's my extra ball of yarn. Love that front little zipper pocket. I'm doing a voice over here because I honestly can't, can't style, can't
can't walk, talk, and everything at the same at the same time. So, <coughs> so I'm doing a video, a voiceover video. I really do love this bag. I love it so much that I don't use it. I'm not using it yet, but I will get around to using it when the uh, the summer gets here. And I think it really adds a pop of brightness to all these solid shades in this outfit. I love that little handle too. Good, good idea whoever thought of that. The second look here is uh, with a short sleeved open neck solid color top brown with um, my pants that have a snake skin sort of pattern on them. Very not me, but anyway, I bought them. I love them. They, they're so comfy. It's the, the fabric they're made out of. And I uh, also dug out my uh, troll bead leather bracelet. I love troll beads. I was really into them for a while there. Um, and actually bringing this out uh, got me looking at them again. Uh-oh, big mistake. Anyway, the, the belt is um, matches the uh, shoes that I've got on. And this is a, a casual look and actually I find this much more comfortable than the look with the the cotton shirt now the cotton shirt pulls on me and maybe that's why uh, I, I'm not as comfortable in it so that made me look at this next look so I've been uh, doing a little bit of sewing and so this top is fitted for me it's a pattern for just a little slip over top and I ended up doing a FBA on it so that it fits me better it doesn't pull across the front and I actually lengthened it with the uh, horizontal stripe piece along the bottom I really like uh, how this fabric it's a K fabric um, stripe shots or something it's called it's quite old I bought it years ago for the K uh, Afghan, Rowan Afghan sew along or knit along. I love how you can just sort of take a cardigan and even this long one and throw it over your shoulders like if I was sitting in a plane someday or sitting around even just outside here and I was cold I could just throw it over my shoulders. It's a very versatile piece this. I really really enjoy it um, and I I find the things that I really love about this is I just really love the length. It's nice to have something that's this long. And the final look I want to share with you, it's a, it's a, it's a casual day at home. You've got some old favorites on, my favorite jeans. I love this top. I got it on the sale rack at Gap for like five bucks. Can't beat it. And, uh, so I'm just going to put my sweater on because it's a little bit cool and I'm, I'm just wandering around the garden looking to see what happens, what has to be done. And so things don't have to match match perfectly and they don't have to be, it, it's, it's a sweater that can be, be used very casually. Now, one thing I've noticed doing all these videos, this sweater is too big. You'll see how much it overlaps on the front and I'm constantly pulling it up at the shoulders to make to stop the bend in the back so you know what I think I need to knit it again what do you think <laughs>